Oh, shalom, brothers and sisters. Adonai sifatai tiftak ufi yagi tehilateka. Adonai open my lips that my mouth may proclaim your praises. <clears throat> it's a great joy to talk to you today, to continue to share with you the things that Hashem is revealing to me as we study and learn and grow, as we move away from idolatry, we move away from ignorance into the blessed light of redemption. I'm reading from my Art Scroll Sudur for uh, it's with the inter interlinear translation. <clears throat> and you can get this book at Art Scroll or see this book at Art Scroll. A R T S C R O L L, one word, dot com. And you can purchase prayer books there that will. You can study in your home <clears throat> because it says now in Jeremiah 31, 34, no longer are you going to need a teacher, particularly those of you who are being resurrected or revivified because one of God's characteristics is that he revivifies the dead. And one of our experiences is that we are being resurrected from the dead to have a conscious encounter because our encounter with Hashem is not a thing. It's not something that is initiated from my side. I'm a recipient of grace that has come, bestowed upon me, and this grace has supreme intelligence that leads me to the technology of consciousness, spiritual technology, that makes someone a Hebrew. If you are Hebrew and you are illiterate, <clears throat> then I submit to you that you're not a Hebrew. <clears throat> That's why we have to make up a language if you're not a Hebrew. You know, you make up something, some other language. But if you're a Hebrew, you're speaking language and you're praying in Hebrew. <clears throat> and we're moving in concert with the laws of nature that evolve and continue to create reality that's propitious for the moment. Yesterday's technology is no longer appropriate, which is why we no longer <clears throat> walk to California from these places, we simply get on the airplane and fly out to California in a couple of hours as opposed to taking several months and walking as we did at a certain period of history. My point is that there are different technologies for different periods of history because the nature of reality is to evolve at what was expedient yesterday except for this technology which is eternal and holy sacred technology will always be beneficial. And that's why this technology is imperative for us to have, which has been given to us by the fathers who were enlightened in this tradition to read these words and to be transformed. I would like to do two things today. I'd like to share with you a thought that just continues to leap off of the page each time each time I read, and it keeps goes back to Jeremiah uh, 31, 34, which is we're not going to need a teacher. Hashem is doing this. The consciousness Hashem has done, it is leading us on the path of righteousness for the purpose of glorifying his name. Uh, so here's the point that I want to make in this. These are Hashem's words speaking, and we read this every morning in the uh, in the Siddur, in the prayers. Uh, I'll read it in English first. I betroth you to me forever. Just think about these words. Saying now, do, do we need a savior? Is Jesus our savior? Do we need someone to teach us? And is Jesus our savior? And I say no. Hashem, if you are Israel, and we are Israel being resurrected from the dead of, of slavery and Christianity, which go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other and to be awakened to the reality that Hashem is one and his name is one and he's indivis indivisible and he's supremely unique and there's no three, just one. But he says to his people here in Hosea, uh, Hosea chapter 2, verse 21 through 22, uh, I betroth you to me forever and I will betroth you to me with righteousness justice, kindness, and with mercy. So I'm going to marry you, and I'm going to marry you with these things. I'm going to be 
righteous. I'm going to marry you forever. You're going to be mine forever. And it involves righteousness, justice, but not just justice. To balance justice, I'm going to add mercy and kindness to you. And I will betroth you to me with fidelity. I will not be unfaithful to you. I will not leave you. I will not abandon you. And you shall know me. Hmm? Vaya da at et Hashem. Let me read it now in Hebrew. Having said, but what does it say? A couple of points I want to make. Hashem is betro has betrothed. It's, I'm marrying you forever, Israel. And the way in which I marry you is going to be with fidelity, righteous kindness, and mercy forever. With fidelity, and you shall know me. Let's see. Vayadaat et Hashem. You shall know Hashem. And knowing something is being one with it. Because knowledge is the link between the observer and that which is observed, between the subject and the object. Because in reality, from God's consciousness, in that God is the only reality, that we are all an expression of that consciousness. So, very beautiful expression here. Two things, and this is, this is validated again with Jeremiah 31, 34, that you're not going to need a teacher because Hashem is doing everything. He's calling us. He is waking us up for the purpose of being holy. You see, when we were Christians, we were so dirty because you say, Jesus will forgive you for everything, so you just do everything you want to do. Fornication becomes a way of life, adultery and idolatry, and you feel sad, and you say, okay, forgive me, now I'm clean. But that's not, it's not the way it works over here. A man is called to be righteous by virtue of his commitment to be righteous, having been chosen. He's already given that potential. Righteousness is not within his grasp. He says in <clears throat> Genesis, the 17th chapter, when he presents himself to our forefather Abraham as El Shaddai, come walk before me and be perfect. So if imperfection or perfection, excuse me, were not achievable, Hashem would not have said this to Moses. There is a means by which we can be perfected, that is become cognizant of the ultimate reality and synchronize ourselves with that reality and flow in with that. And that is to know. Know is union. Know is union. You remember when <clears throat> our our forefather Yitzhak got married. No, Yit Yaakov got married. He worked seven years and he wanted to get married. And he couldn't get married to his first choice, Rachel. He got Leah. But in the scripture it said, but he went into Leah and he knew her, to know her. To, he was united with her. To become one with something is to know it. So Hashem says, you shall know me. So long before we had any type of concept of coming, somebody needing a savior so that you can now have this relationship with God, that was for someone else who was not a part of our, our mishpachat, our family. They were goyims over there, and they did things. They didn't have a law, and now they came and got us and took us over there, and we're covered with the filth of fornication and idolatry and money lust because we think black man, that the purpose of life is to come and get a lot of money because this is the model in Egypt. And when we say Egypt, we're not talking about a geographical distinction. We're talking about a metaphoric distinction. We're not talking about Kemet. We're talking about Egypt land in terms of metaphor in a mythology that describes a low carnal place, a place where carnality is glorified, the flesh is glorified, and God is not known. And we were in that land, which means it's metaphor for you, black American, right now. You are in Egypt land, which is called the United States of America on well, but is a land that entices you not toward righteousness, and that's why we have discarded our faith and now pursue money through our abilities, athletics, entertainment, etc. 
but our gifts are to be used to glorify Hashem because we are his children and we are, have the capacity to know him because he says in Hosea chapter 2 verse 21, via hasatig li o le olam, via hasatig li le olam, via hasatig li bezadak u vi me sefat, u vi hesed, u vi rakamin, via hasatig li be imuna vada et et Hashem. I betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me with righteousness, with justice, with kindness and mercy. And I will betroth you to me with fidelity. And you shall know Hashem. Via hasatig li. The olam via hasatig li. Via hasatig li. Bi zadek. Uv me sifat. Uve hesed, uve rakmin, via rasatig, libi, muna vayada et Hashem. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful knowledge they to give you. Now you mean Hashem? Yes. Remember they told you, in order for you to go to heaven, you've got to believe in a fellow named J-E-S-U-S. And then you continue to be shot down and killed and suffer because you're ignorant of who you are. Well, who am I? Well, I'm Israel. Go look in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, where Hashem and, and Moses is having this discussion. And Hashem said, you let my son go, even my firstborn, that he may come and do what? Praise me, serve me. He's not to serve anybody but me, for he is mine, for I have betrothed them to me. I have betrothed myself to him with righteousness, justice, kindness, and mercy, and fidelity, and he shall know me. He doesn't have to wonder about me. He doesn't have to believe in me and hope in me blindly. He shall know me and walk in that light, which is consciousness and truth and awareness and unity and sanctity and holiness. The second point I'd like to make today is that it is a great joy to wake up every morning. And that's why upon waking, we say the prayer, Modea, Ani, Lefeneka Melekai, Vika, Yom, Sheke, Zarta, Bi, Nisimati, Bi, Kimela, Rabba, Amuna, Teka. See that we give thanks for, for opening our eyes. He's giving us another day. Great is his compassion toward us. We acknowledge that. And then we continue to make holy prayers in this beautiful, power-packed prayer, Sadur. And this is a prayer that I love. It's just beautiful because it's, it makes me mindful of how blessed I am simply to wake up and to be able to get up out of bed, to stretch, to bend over, to put on my shoes, then to navigate throughout the house, move. This, and you know, that is such a blessing because if you just, if you had one of those blessings taken away, you would realize then just how, how blessed you are to get up and to bend over to tie your shoe. There's so many who cannot get out of bed. There are so many who cannot bend over. There are so many. So we give thanks to Hashem for all of these blessings just one of these things if we can't do. So I want to read this blessing of prayers in Hebrew and in English to show you how, how mindful one should be in what praying and thanking Hashem for his gratitude does to you. It awakens more fully the very, the very gifts that you are praying for because you are praying in Ivrit. And you are hearing yourself pray. You are hearing holy words. You are hearing holy words at a sub, at a conscious level. But your higher self is hearing them at a much deeper and profound level. And since these words are the expression of the ultimate intelligence, it resonates with the unified feel in engaging the laws of nature that quickly manifest whatever is being said. Remember, that's the power of this holy tongue. You're no longer uttering vacuous, empty, acoustical utterances. You are articulating holy, sanctified light and intelligence that creates everything. 
and you are an individualized expression of that on the level of being, and you have a culture and a consciousness and a biological house to live on and ethnicity in relative time. But the relative is an expression of the absolute. So when we say these prayers in Hebrew and even in our mother tongue with our intention, there is an effect. But the greatest effect by virtue of the language itself being holy is to read them in Hebrew. And that's why coming out of the darkness, if you are a seed of Abraham, that is your birthright to have this language, this is your language. You never had anything that was yours. Well, Hashem gave me something that is mine, my language, my name, my culture, my relationship with him, the gifts that he alone has given me. No one conferred upon it, and this is the technology that he has given us. So may his name be blessed. I want to read for you now these blessings in English, and then I'll read to you in Hebrew and encourage you, uh, those of us who are just waking up, to get you a Hebrew text, get you a Sadur, Art Scroll Sadur, uh, a uh edition, and begin to petition Hashem. Remind him what he said. You said in Zephaniah 3, 9, that if I ask you, but the thing is, I see right now, I saw some people today, you can't BS Hashem. You know, you've been a Christian, that means you've been, you know, not really real. So, but being with Hashem means coming in now to light, assuming your position as the head of creation. It means being holiness and what you're going to discover is that everything in Babylon that they told you is happiness. That is money, wealth, cars, lots of women, being intoxicated, fornicating, having ships, boats, airplanes. Nothing compares to the connection with the divinity. And if you spend your life pursuing those things, if you get those things, you'll have a few moments of recognition by the poor. Those who don't have anything and look up to you because you have it. And then after seven decades, you'll go off to sea. And your life will have been in vain. But when you turn and seek and be connected with Hashem, then that connection right there revivifies the dead. We say in one of our blessings, in the second one of the blessings, he revivifies the dead. See? So these blessings are just so important. Let me read it. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who gave us the heart, understanding to distinguish between the day and the night. Blessed are you, Hashem, King of the universe, who did not make me a Gentile. Blessed are you, Hashem, King of the universe, who did not make me a slave. Blessed are you, Hashem, our King of the universe, who did not make me a woman. And if you're a woman, you say, blessed are you, Hashem, King of the universe, who made me according to his will. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who gives sight to the blind. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who clothes the naked. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who release the bounds. Blessed are you, Hashem, our King of the universe, who straightens the bent. Blessed are you, Hashem, our King of the universe, who spreads out the earth upon the waters. Blessed are you, Hashem, King of the universe, who establishes footsteps of man. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who provides me with all my needs. Blessed are you, Hashem, uh, blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who girds Israel with strength. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who crowns Israel with splendor. Blessed are you, Hashem, uh, blessed are you, Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who gives to the weary strength. So beautiful. Now, the real beauty of these prayers, again, let me stress, is the ability to say them in the Hebrew language because they're so, so joyful and so rich. So let's say them now in Ivri. Baruch Katar Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natin Lashikivi Vina Leha Vikiyin Bain Yom Uvein Laila. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shalom Ashani Goy. 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam shalosh ashani aved. Baruch atah Adonai melech ha'olam shalosh ashani isha, if you're a man. Baruch atah Adonai melech ha'olam shalosh ashani vi'irizono, if you're a woman. Baruch atah Adonai melech ha'olam pokea'ak ivarim. Baruch atah Adonai melech ha'olam melabish. Arumim, Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam, Matir Asurim, Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam, Kukuf, Zokokif, Kufufim, straightens out the bit. Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam, Rukia Haaretz Al Hamaim, Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam, Hamavim Mizaari Gavir. Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam She'asa Ali Ika Azareki Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam Ozir Yisrael Bigavruva Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam Otir Yisrael Bitifira Baruch Atah Adonai Melech HaOlam Hanoiin Li'iyaif Koach Blessed is you Holy name, Hashem, for this opportunity to utter these prayers and say, I pray that all of the, the, the recipients of this wisdom will be inspired to go and seek technology of consciousness in the Hebrew language from the Siddur and learn to pray in the language that will connect us to you, that we may love our neighbor as ourselves. for the reality of our duality is unity, a tie hard, Ushimo Echad, you are one and your name is one. Baruch Hashem.